Good evening, Pork McCall. How are you? I'm great, Denise. Great to see you. And you After all like this time. Like We've been locked away for a long, long time. <laughs> How has the yeah, lockdown actually, I can't remember the last time the battle, really. Lockdown has been um, interesting. It's been, it's, it, you know, we, we had two or three months of beautiful, fine weather here over in Ackle. Um, we've had a, our front garden is effectively the beach. And we've had, um, it's, it's, it, was, it was actually a lovely time, sort of family time. Um, obviously, once, once the first week was a little bit surreal, you know, trying to figure out what's happening and how best to deal with that. And uh, but I think once we once we sort of got past the first few days, got into a little bit of a routine and pattern. And um, it actually, looking back, it was actually, you know, it was really an, an idyllic time. I mean, I live in a beautiful part of the country. I live in Ackle Island, and um, so we, we have a small community here. It's about two and a half thousand people on the island. We're connected to, we're not we're not completely cut off, but we're connected by a bridge, which is pretty much permanent bridge you can swivel open every now and then so we were we we're very much closed off um and we were lucky then we had we had just incredible weather for about two months so we we really it was it was actually a gorgeous time for mm -hmm. for a lot of it you know um and did, you know uh, did it change for you at all or were you still being, were you still able to work every day and go into your studio we saw your studio clip which is amazing you've got the best studio I've ever seen. Yeah, it's a, it's it's a stunning studio. It is. I've been very fortunate in that um, that it's 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 actually the old it's the old national school, um, the old village national school. So it's a one classroom school, um, and it's, it's closed about maybe thirty or twenty five years now. Um, but I've I've been using that for a number of years for my painting workshops that I run over the summer, and then about two two years ago, two and a half years ago now. Um, the scouts had been using it, the, the local scout group, but the scouts have disbanded in Ackle. And unfortunately, they couldn't get the leaders. It was for various reasons they they disbanded, and so I, I was able to take over the the, the full the, the building as, as my full studio. Wow. And uh, it, it's an amazing space because it gives me it just that that lovely light and the height in the room. It's it, mm -hmm. it's incredible. You know? So it allows me work on a lot of big pieces, which you mightn't have been able to do yeah. before. Yeah, no, it's so it's so important. I suppose we can, um, you could explain to people that we I, I know you it's such a long time. I mean, I think you've been in the gallery from day one, so nearly twenty years. Um, so I feel like I know. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, and when you were you were living in Dublin uh, when we first started promoting your work, but you always had the house in Ashford and just spent summer. Yeah. summer. Yeah, and then once once we I've got three children, I suppose the children came along later. And once we had the I suppose it was around the time of what 2008, 2009. Mm. Um so it was just you know we're, we're here ten, we're we're living here full time um, nearly ten years now, going into oh. ten years. And we moved out we moved from Dublin during the last recession, the start of the last recession. Um and the, the children were starting school. So they they've I've got Twins, twelve-year-old twins who have gone through national school, primary school here on the on the island, um, and then I've got my younger boy Tom is uh, still in primary school, and so that was yeah that was a big big move I suppose for us, and it was again it's it, it's worked out really really well for them you know it's, it was lovely, um, it helped I suppose with the you know the, the driver I suppose was I suppose that the recession that was happening at the time and it was, it was yeah. allowed to come down here a little bit. Um, I do feel that when you moved, that your work, I mean, because you were surrounded by that landscape, definitely had a major impact on, on your work. Um, oh, yeah, it's, it's incredible. I, mean, but I suppose before, before that, what I was, I'd be coming over to the West for a little while and going back down to my studio in Delgany in Wicklow. And I'd be painting, you know, the West of Ireland in Wicklow, which is a bit odd. And then, but since I've... And so, and then you're, you're depending on photographs and sketches and stuff like that. Whereas, being since we moved here, I mean, you're just you're living this every single day. You're breathing it in. You're you're absorbing it. And it, so, like most of what I do is in the studio. I don't. I'm not a plein air painter. You know, mm -hmm. I don't. I just don't see the joy in in sitting out in you know, gusts of wind, holding onto your easel, <laughs> trying to capture something that's that's moving so quickly you can't see it. So I I much prefer to sit in the studio, in my lovely studio, and and work 
um, I suppose from you know from sketches and, and photographs, and then I'll. But because I'm absorbing everything on a day to day basis here, just living here, mm. you know, I, 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 I instinctively sort of you know I suppose follow my 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 my, my gut on this and how the colors should work, how the colors should come together and blend together, and that that's I think I get you know it's it, it's something inside you that sort of um, just makes it. I, I need to be sure that if it feels right, if it feels like the West of Ireland, if it feels like like Absolutely. an apple, yeah. that, that's what I'm trying to get across. So it's never just about painting a scene. You know, mm -hmm. I, I sort of stopped doing that quite deliberately a, a long time ago. So all my paintings, they're quite, you know, it, it's about trying to get that, evoke the atmosphere. And um, and it's lovely, being, you know, living in the center of it and living over here and, and having, just taking that in every day um, and seeing it out the window every day, you know, that's it comes easier then when, come, you know, when, when you're in the studio trying to, Say, do, do these colors work together? Does it give? Is the atmosphere coming together? Is is it a true atmosphere? You know. And yeah, and you're surrounded by many artists down there as well, aren't you? I mean. Yeah, there's, there's a great little um, community here of uh, a, a lot of I suppose a lot of artists travel over here, you know, for for short times, short breaks. I mean, it's it's always, you know, it's 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 the real it's the Paul Henry sort of the center of Ireland. You know, that, that's where. <laughs> You would have been here for you know ten or so years, and you can see why he came over. And it's you know so it, it, it's drawn an awful lot of people over. Um, mm. I suppose because of the it's where it, it is quite remote, so it may not be the easiest place to to settle and live in. You know, so it um, there'll be a smallish enough community of, of of people living you know full time on the, on the island. Mm. But uh, that's, I mean we we have some very very renowned artists. I mean Camille Souter lives mm. here and. Um, not someone that I know personally at all, but uh, you know, internationally renowned artist, uh, Irish artist, and Ron Halpin would be another um, amazing um, sculptor, bronze sculptor, and that, and and you know, they, they they both have sort of made their, you know, they they've been living here for years, so it, it, it attracts a lot of a lot of creative people, a lot, a lot of artists to to the place, and it, it's easy to see why when when you when you get here on a good day, you know, and it's it just has everything. Mm -hmm. um, it's almost like a. In, it, it's almost like everything in miniature has you know the mountains, the ocean, the bogs, the landscape, the old. I mean, for me, it's, it's the old buildings on the roads and the telegraph mm -hmm. poles. It's everything. It's, it's it, everything about. I think the west of Ireland is is encapsulated here on Ackle Island. Yeah, it's everything you need. You know? We do. Yeah, we we ship quite a lot of your work, uh, especially to the states and Canada, all over the world. So, yeah. um, it's so well received. Uh, can you yeah so the latest uh this show in particular um a lot of it is, is very new new york scenes in particular especially the, the one behind me you want to tell us how you started on this collection yeah this this came about um it came out about directly through my, my other great passion apart from painting is is music and playing music and listening to music and mm. but pretty playing music and i i play saxophone with the mayo concert orchestra and I have done for the last five years and um, five or six years now. And uh, director of the of the orchestra, Kathy Fahey, um, has has written a, an amazing uh, hour and a half orchestral uh, contemporary dance piece, which is a with a, with a storyline that tells the story of of the Irish famine back in the eighteen forties and of, of a fictitious family in Mayo who get separated and broken up, um, and some part of the family are left in Ireland. The other and the daughter goes over to New York. Mm -hmm. And so the story is told through minimum minimum narration. Um, and it's all done through contemporary dance uh, with Kira Sexton, who'd be a renowned uh, river dance and Lord of Dance uh, dancer. She choreographed and uh, was the lead dancer for the show. But I was asked, Kathy asked me, would I create a series of paintings that would help to, to tell the story? And um, so for each scene, the, there's a separate painting, and each painting then was was projected onto the back the back uh, screen of the stage. So there's a series of maybe 20 paintings that make up the collection, and they the they, the paintings change as as the story is told on stage with the dance. And it was it was an incredible experience because we've it premiered in Castle Bar in the Theatre Royal to uh, to about 1,400 people. Yeah, it's amazing. Um, Mm. In September, and then the following week, we went over to New York and we premiered in New York in um, in the Symphony Space over there, which was an amazing experience. Mm. And it was it, it was it was a real so, so 
there were times when you, when you saw it from because I was playing in the orchestra, I actually didn't get a chance to see. I, I, I was on stage with the orchestra, so I didn't really get a chance to see the how the images worked. And it was only afterwards when I saw some of the photographs and some video from the show, I could see how just how well that you know it was a real collaboration between the dance choreography and some of the figures, some of the, the, the images on, on, on the paintings. And then and I, I sort of set my paintings to the story and to the music. And then Kira used some of my images and some of the paintings to just to give her some sort of lead or direction in the choreography. And when there were times when, when the three the music the story, the four, so the music, the story, the choreography, and the paintings sort of came together or gelled. And it, it, was, it, was, it was lovely to be really part of something. Oh, something. Yeah, and you a lot of the work obviously was meant to be shown in New York when you were flying over and doing a lot, exactly. a lot of demonstration, <laughs> unfortunately. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, was, so on the other side, we have them now in the gallery. And, um, yes, yeah, yeah. yeah, I mean, we were obviously, we were hoping to, to do a lot more at the show this year, um, mm -hmm. but because of COVID has, has locked everything down. So, uh, but I do think, but so I'm not, you, I've, I always wanted to be able to show a lot of the images together, you know, to ex exhibit them in a gallery setting. Um, and so, you know, we'll do that this year. So I'm really looking forward to, you know, to, to the show now in, in, in the coming days. And uh, it's, I suppose it, one of the, I suppose the most rewarding things about it was it allowed me to to work on a, I suppose take all the elements of all the subject matter that I usually work with. So a lot of the landscapes were, you know, were, were the obvious sort of, you know, go-to. But then when it came to the American landscapes, it was quite a challenge because it was this is back in the 1840s. Mm -hmm. um, so a lot of research on Google and looking at old, old watercolors because there's so little uh, photographic and truth. behind me, where, where exactly is that? Or was it? It's actually, it, that's actually taken from, it's Albany. Um, mm. What I tried, I was trying to get the feel, it is, that's actually from an old, is that from a, I think it's, it's an old sketch that I saw I came across online. So I, I just I was looking really just for, for the shapes of the buildings for the yeah. Um, but something that was more real New England, you know, sort of um, East Coast New York, um, and actually one one of my the, one of the first things I went to actually because when I was thinking great you know 1840s you know sort of the famine you know thing of Ellis Island and Brooklyn Bridge and all this, but none of those actually existed back you now Brooklyn Bridge didn't exist until another for another 50 years at the current of the, the 18th century the 19th century and um Ellis Island wasn't even commissioned as the um the immigration point at that point um there so it was there was a lot to I suppose it was, it was, it was fascinating going back and actually just studying up on that on that time and looking for I suppose what I was trying to do was find one or two images that could work as as a painting because mm -hmm. Kathy was kind of quite adamant when, when she asked me to do this that she didn't want just backdrops. She didn't want, you know, like a pantomime backdrop. She wanted mm -hmm. paintings that so that were so it, it, it was a different. It was, it was, it was a it, she wanted paintings that would you know work on their own com completely, and then the paintings then would be used as part of the show, mm -hmm. which was uh, which was lovely. So it was very much um, GP effectively gave me free reign. Mm. Uh, which is great, you know. And I suppose it allowed me to use my, uh, going back to an earlier question you asked me, when, from moving to Ackle, mm. one of the key things, I suppose, changes that I did, you know, here was I, I started painting figures. I started, I suppose, really trying to incorporate my own family and my yeah. own children in the paintings. Yeah, I was just about to ask you about that because you're, yeah. you're, you're, you're just, you have such a distinctive style of the red roof and the cottages. Um, so I always remember when you launched the figures, um, yes, but this one yeah. behind you is very striking, uh, and that that's fairly that's a huge lockdown, isn't it? This little new darker series. Yeah, yeah. Because when I started, when I did them first, and, and sort of over the last number of years, the, the, the family pieces are all about togetherness mm -hmm. and about warmth, and, you know, just a family grouping, and uh, it, there's a real connection with people who 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 go for those paintings and like them. That I suppose because they're so. Um, simple and so lacking in detail it's literally just very simple shapes just enough information to tell you this is a family or this is a boy or this is a girl it could be art it could be anything it could be anyone um and 
you know, so I, I, was, I was able to use a lot of those in the show, in the American show. The, the, the show's called Fawn Your Ore, by the way. Um, mm -hmm. And so it's not, a lot of the paintings in that show were it featured the, the figures. But when I came to, literally with, during the lockdown, then within a week, I mean, I just, I, I said the first thing that came to my head was, okay, all the, all the galleries are closed. All the shops are closed. Everything's just shut down now for we don't know how long. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Pressure to have the pressure to have all those paintings ready for the gallery. You know, for, for you, Denise. No. Yeah. 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 Lots of yeah. chats and conversations about what works yeah. and everything. Yeah. There was so yeah. much. So, involved. Uh, but, but you know, it was actually lovely to take that up because it meant really. I didn't. You know, there was no there was no timeline now. There was no deadlines because all the deadlines were gone, and um, so I was able to actually just go back and paint what I wanted to paint oh. for myself. And I found was I just found myself not interested in painting landscapes, and um, and I'd started, I'd, I'd act before the whole thing started, before the whole COVID lockdown kicked in, I'd started to to work on on these darker sort of image, darker backgrounds, and I was trying to use the, the those amazing colours in in the bogs. I mean, we've we've got blanket bog over here at Knackle, and in the winter time, um, and the autumn time, the, the colours you've got these really rich, deep umbers and indigos and it's just incredible dark colors and i wanted to use those in the paintings so i, I was actually doing i was playing with this in, in january you know or in february mm -hmm. and then around the same time that i'd start to figure out what i wanted to do and start put, using figures in them uh the lockdown came in so mm -hmm. the two came together but it wasn't it, it, it i mean they're quite they are quite dark you can see one over my, my shoulder here mm -hmm. and they're I suppose what, what what they what they came to to mean then to me was I, I I started just using you know the family grouping again, and it was a sense of trying to keep you know so the family is at the center of the image of the painting, and there but there's light in the distance. It was a very simple idea of a little mm. bit of a touch of sky in the, in the distance. So it's quite a, a dark but quite a warm. You know, I mean, it's always yeah, all my paintings. Like that. I mean that's yeah I really really love it. It's one thing I. But all the talks we've had with artists, it's been so lovely to hear that they've been trying out what they've always wanted to do, but didn't have the time to do it. Yes, yeah. And also, I suppose, you know, it, it's it's also, you know, it's freedom as well from, you know, there was absolutely no, you know, I suppose, when you're, trying, when you're trying to make your living as an artist, and mm -hmm. which I'm thankfully doing, um, there is, you have to be, you have to yeah. recognize that there are, you know, there are, you know, if there are certain pieces people tend to like, you know, you're going to sort of follow that line to some degree. Mm. Um, it's, it's usually at the start of the year when I start I paint entirely, you know, I start trying new ideas, exploring new, new ideas. This is one that really I just wanted to do for myself. Mm. I've started working on the, some more, so certainly by, the, by autumn of this year, I'm going to have, I will have more. We will see more. Yeah, yeah. It, it, it's, there's something, it, it's, it's a different, different line for me. It takes me away a little bit from the the, the lovely bright reds and yellow, but it's you can still get the warmth and the absolutely yeah, you know, yeah. and I yeah. love that behind you. That's a, a typical Ackle scene, isn't it? Yeah, this is yeah that that's that's the recently finished piece, which is, will be wending its way up to the gallery as soon as I can get it up there. Okay. Um, yeah, it's, uh, actually, yeah, I'm really pleased with this one. It's 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 been sitting in the studio since I say January. You know, I just haven't I haven't it was one of these pieces that I was waiting for a long, long time just to figure out what's what do I do next to finish it. You know, uh, either I was going to do something huge, or as it turned out, it was actually it's a relatively small thing to do. And it's it, sometimes it's about how how the colors come together and how they've got to settle together. And and it's almost like music, you know, where you're looking, you're, you're you're building chords against you know it's chords one one after the other, and you can you can make them dissonant. You, you have one jump out. You, you, you want to make it as, as musical or as as so everything comes together naturally and sort of and, and once that happens, every you know every, every time you see it for me every time I look at it, I said oh yeah everything's settled everything that's and it was really just dulling down one or two colours and bringing out another one and suddenly the whole thing worked whereas you know for months I was looking at this and I think oh, God, something yeah, just yeah yeah I'd be quite good at knowing though when a painting is finished. Yeah, but it's the only, and it's, and yet there's no science to it. It's literally, it is literally an instinct. It, it's, and it's for me, it's when I you walk in, when I come into the studio. I always sort of say that when I come into the studio for the first time every day, mm -hmm. you know, I've got a couple of seconds where I, I glance at everything that's around on the walls, yeah. around the floor, yeah. 
and within those few seconds you, you just you know straight away what's what's working what's not what's finished what's some something still niggling there and you can and if you do i, I suppose i i do that every day so you if, if, if there's a piece that's really it just it doesn't feel right then mm -hmm. that's not you know and mm -hmm. then and then a small thing might bring it together again or else i might end up completely redoing it or doing a whole section of it um, and taking it somewhere else but uh, mm. it, it's a funny thing because it's you're, you're it's completely dependent on, on that sort of gut instinct so mm. god knows what would happen if, if that ever disappeared yeah. <laughs> i don't know what i do and wait, how about commissions i mean you're you've been so good with commissions with us and a lot of our clients have shop commissions yeah. um and you've been do you like doing them or <laughs> I do. I, yeah. that email from me, do you dread it? <laughs> I do. I, I, I love. I, I, I love doing commissions as as long as I'm not tied tied down to a very specific, very. Mm -hmm. um, so some people like like will want to see a replica of what, you know, if whether it's a scene or whether it's a, their house or something. I just I can't do that. I don't do that because it's mm -hmm. not that's not that's not what I try and get across in a painting. Oh. What I try and get across in a painting is the. It's the atmosphere and the feeling of, of of being there. I always, when I'm at my workshops, I always sort of say, you know, you're, you know, you know, okay, you, you can learn how to maybe, you know, how to draw a building or draw the landscape or, and you know, just, but it's how do you actually draw the feeling of being in the landscape? How do you, that, that's where, that's where I suppose the freeness and the expression, the freeness of, of my style and it, it's that, that's what I get into, you know. So, mm -hmm. so commissions. I'm I'm always more than happy to take on a commission, and and I I don't I'll only commit to it if I feel I can actually make a painting that I'm happy with, because mm -hmm. I'm not happy with it. I, you know, it just drives me to the wall. And the yeah. number of times I've never I had anyone unhappy with the commissions. Yeah, quite the opposite. Um, yeah. and people have got quite emotional as well when you know got lots of emails from clients who they really were quite emotional yeah. when they saw it. Yeah. And it's lovely. To it, it, it's lovely getting that feedback um because yeah. sometimes you're, you're working in a vacuum or you're working for yourself you know yeah, yeah. so it should be when you see the connection that people make them with the painting mm -hmm. but um but yeah, the commission and funny enough uh, it's the the figure i suppose the family pieces that i do would mm -hmm. be i get a lot of commissions for those um, and yeah. because of you might have some with, with the family three or seven or one you know and that's and that that's something I, I I always love doing because yeah I'm, I'm drawing from my own my own family and my own experience you know. So what will we see over the next few weeks? Are we going to see more family scenes, more boat scenes? What? <laughs> yeah, I'm actually well, I'm 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 start I'm working on I've started a new a sort of continuation of the slightly darker paintings um, mm -hmm. and. I don't know whether that's uh, you know I, I suppose I'll always I'll always I'll have plenty more of landscapes in there as well. But I, I like to just I, I like to try and push myself a little bit and, and take myself out of my comfort zone a little bit, you know, because it is too easy to fall into the flow of just repeating and, and going sticking with the with yeah. the you know what you know working on what you know that people like and want, which is brilliant to have that. But I think yeah. keep that yeah. fresh, to keep that fresh, I have to keep my own creative sense. <laughs> Yeah. So, and I'm, I have to. I loved working on, on on those what I call the the COVID paintings. You know, it's the ones in spring, that those darker ones. And I don't know whether it's you know whether we're heading into autumn now and mm -hmm. heading into what looks like God knows another lockdown. An unknown. Yeah. An unknown. <laughs> you know? and so maybe it's time to try to go back into these again. But yeah. but I'm. Um, oh, I love the new direction, and I think there's something really special about the work after lockdown. Um, it's definitely there's more thought on it. Everything you can see, everyone's taking their time on it. So yeah, it's yeah. It I think that's probably the it's, it's taking it's it's the taking the time part. Yeah, yeah. Even, you know, I mean, it's, um, I I mean, I'm lucky, and this was anyone that's making a living as an artist is mm -hmm. is fortunate to be able to do that you know and mm -hmm. um, but to do that there is you have to you're cognizant of you know there are deadlines there are times in the year where work has to be in the gallery where an exhibition comes. so all that stuff yeah. and it's, it's not heavy pressure but it's just it's like a gentle a gentle sort of push in the back you know yeah, no, I, I can totally relate yeah. I, yeah, so I, I feel it as well because i'm i'm not having i'm not working around doing art for it but it's really nice just yeah. to 
relax Absolutely. with the time to get to know everyone. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I, I can relate to you. Yeah, so it's nice just just having just just taking the foot off the accelerator for a little bit and mm. being around yourself. Then just just follow just follow what you want to do, you know. Yeah. And and then if if something good comes from that, that people, I mean, I've, I've been I've been pleasantly surprised. I mean, I've, I've made a number of uh, sales of, of the darker people. You know, I call them really darker pieces. That they're I need to come up with a better, a better term for these because <laughs> dark in them, you know. I think. COVID people, yeah. <laughs> uh, people connect straight away with them, and uh, which is lovely. So when, when you get that connection, yeah. that just gives me all the encouragement I need to go off and do ten more and do more. Yeah. We'll follow that direction and see see what else I can come up with from from, from you using those colors and and and, uh, and creating those atmospheres. Mm -hmm. Oh well, thank you for it's been really really nice talking to you, and thank yeah, you for taking you. the time. It's, uh, yeah, hopefully see you soon. Yes, indeed, absolutely. Yeah, it's been too long. Exactly. Thank you. Take care. Take care. Thank you. Bye.